Are you missing out on one of your favorite shows because it's not available in your region? Listen, trying to keep your private time private? Well, let me introduce NordVPN. If you're bored with US Netflix, why not take it for a spin on the UK, honey? Using NordVPN and a click of a button, you can do just that. With 5,000 plus server options, no show is out of your reach. Listen, we all love to binge, but privacy is a big deal too. NordVPN keeps your information encrypted so you never have to worry about your IP or location getting out. They've also doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection features. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Check out our link, nordvpn.com slash sibling to get your subscription started today. That's nordvpn.com slash sibling. N-O-R-D-V-P-N.com slash sibling. Oh my goodness, Bob, we're going on tour. This is so exciting. Listen, y'all, tickets are available right this very second. Help us yes, sell this tour out. Help us go bananas. So the next time y'all see us, we'll be at Madison Square Garden, Haney. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you something. This is the biggest tour Bob and I are doing. It's going to be great. Lights, camera, action, dancers, podcast, everything you want in a Bob and Monet show, you're going to get. So make sure you get your tickets at bobandmonet.com. Oh, and there's also going to be brand new music. Ooh. All right, bobandmonet.com. Monet, exchange. Um, Bob, you know, how are you? A, I, you know, today's an odd day. I, um, it is, well, it, I'm, in, I'm in New York City right now. I'm in a hotel in New York City. And you're in Chicago? I am in Chi-Town, yes. And that's like dampen the mood for everyone. But today is the day that they overturned Roe v. Wade. So it's just been kind of a weird uh, day in general. And I think that we need to, I want to obviously talk about it at some point. I'm going to do this episode of Watch It right now. But it's just been kind of an interesting day. How about you? Yeah, agreed. We're petting our shopping this morning when I saw the news this morning at like 7 o'clock. And I was like, oh, God. And I saw um, fucking Clarence Thomas and his fucking... Um, wife Jenny, there's this new draft that apparently leaked that they're gonna try to overturn a uh, uh, same sex marriage. Well, not they're gonna have a, a look at the same way they had to look at Roe v. Wade, um, same sex marriage, um, your right to three, three things same sex marriage, um, what is it, people living with. Um, your right for for people to live together, some like uh, some crazy shit, girl. Just like, would, I yeah. mean, it was basically saying like he was going to try to get same sex marriages, not only just uh, but also just relationships in general and privacy in the bedroom. Privacy in the bedroom. Is, that's what it was. Which is does that is the weird that doesn't even make sense to me. Like what? It's crazy. this is wild, but it is a very weird rolling back of laws, and I do believe that it is a chain reaction, and, and that you know one rollback begets another. You know. Yeah, it's really glum. It's really dark. But we can maybe we can do a. I would love to do a rivalry. Um, the one about women's rights. Bunny and I had this woman. Um, uh, 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 she is she's very knowledgeable on the subject. We had on Ebony and Irony. I'd love to have her on this podcast. Actually, to talk to her, she was really great. Um, so maybe we can do the one about women's rights or the one about the Supreme Court Reprodu- reproductive rights. Shall we say? Um, but yeah, but we'll, you know, we, y'all know, we, we will definitely do a podcast about it. Um, and you know, we, 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 we haven't done a, we haven't done a, you know, not to say the other things we, we discussed aren't serious. We have, we definitely have not done, you know, uh, a heavy topic in a long time, I would say. So I think, right. And I would love to talk about it and have, you know, a conversation. I think our listeners really get into our thoughts and opinions about it and it'll be great to discuss. But anyway, that's been what I've been doing all day and I just had like a really wild weekend and a great show and then I woke up in the morning and I was like oh not this shit Mm -hmm. Um, and it really feels like it's hard to celebrate the victories because they are quickly followed up by some bullshit word word and I mean I just say that's really been full of bullshit with season 8 of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race because I have I forgot. This was the see, episode five. Was the wild episode. That's when y'all started getting. This when y'all started getting crazy, girl. What? What's the bullshit? I mean, the uh, a lot of microaggressive talk, a lot of drama. I was like, oh my, I forgot. This was season eight. Got really messy. There was some microaggressions, which I was rewatching back, being like, oh my god, this shit 
it was wild. I forgot this all this. I, I really forgot this. This whole episode started out with me and Derek fighting. Well, it was it was it was okay. It was a little bit of everyone coming at Derek and Derek defending himself a little bit because <laughs> at the top of the episode, Naomi literally goes, "I was shocked you weren't in the bottom. I was shocked that you weren't." In the I was like, "Oh my god, that is not nice to hear when you are safe." Someone be like, "Bitch, I was, I'm shocked I was, you're still I was here." Shocked that it was. I think that I, it was. I was shocked that it was that was Nisha and I you, or shocked that it was Chi Chi and I you, or someone that she one of the two. She was shocked that it was them mm-hmm. and not Derek Barry. And of course, Derek got uh, a tad bit defensive, shall Hi-fi. we say? Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then I jokingly said um, when she was like, "You, I you see, you poked the bear. Derek. You were Aquarius the vixen. Uh, uh, Derek Barry the vixen. You Aquarius. You poked the bear. You poked it, Bob." Um. <laughs> And, um, and then I said, uh, she said, she goes, uh, so I said, you, you can impersonate Debbie Harry. And I, and I jokingly said, well, I don't want drugs. I want a drug test is what I said. <laughs> and then. No, no. Don't mumble through. What did you say, Bob? The words I just said, said, I want. I didn't mumble. I said, I said it exactly how I said it there. I said, which is when you, you ever say that side of your mouth as a bit, you're like, I can get on drugs. I want to say, I want a drug test. And then Derek Barry was like, well, you didn't get that compliment. <laughs> and I was like, or you didn't get told that your you didn't get told that your performance was phenomenal, something like that. And and then I was like, all right, Derek, I think you just kind of missed the point. Never mind. And then she was like, there is no point. It's always just Bob talking. And I was like, <laughs> and the reason why I said that I was like, well, I feel like a lot of times Derek would like say these like little uh, little um, side comments. And is like it just shade, all, like normal queen shade. Yeah, it's just shade. And I was like, Derek does it all the time, so Derek's into it. She does it. She must be into it. So I'm gonna do it with her. But she was not featuring it. She was not into it at the time. Maybe it was because all the girls were coming to her once, and she felt like she was getting. She felt very attacked. Um, uh-huh. And then she, and then I was like, and I, that's when I was like, you know what? I bet a dollar you're gonna say some shady shit. You're gonna make a side shady comment like you always do all the time. And when you do, I'm just gonna point it out. And then, like clockwork, I mean, oh, wait, the wait, train wait, 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 is no, wait, never late. Something. The 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 rat to drag comment first. She was like, oh, she was like, well, maybe if I want to do no, 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 you no, you no, 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 you're, you're jumping because that was the shady comment. So it all just kind of like um, died down. I said, I said, watch, you're gonna say some shady shit, and 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 then when you, and when you did, because first I was like, is anyone else here acknowledge that Derek always like says these little shady comments? Am I lonely? I live. Am I live in Staten Island right now? Or, am I? Or, am or, I? Yeah. <laughs> Or am I in Manhattan right now? <laughs> am I standing out or am I in Manhattan right now? <laughs> well, that really tickles you. <laughs> because for people who, I guess everyone has universal and everyone knows it's Staten Island. But I was like, for people who may not be from New York, they'd be like, where is Staten Island? But I think everyone probably knows that. It's fair to say. Yeah, well, basically the idea is like, when you're in Staten Island, but you're out there by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Manhattan, you're surrounded by people. And then everyone was like, no, Bob, you're right. Or, or at least one person. I think it was Betty was like, yeah, Bob, you're right. She does do that. And well, I was Betty like, she'll was do it again. Because Betty was like, ooh, someone else is fighting, not me. Betty was eating. Every time the camera pants to Betty, she was like. <laughs> well, but I also think that other people were like, no, Betty does do that. When people are like, no, no, that is a real thing. That is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. Derek does. Derek does do that. So then um, we were all undressing. And I was in my black, this black one shoulder leotard that I made years ago. I don't even know where that thing is. And then that's when Derek says, "Hey Bob, if I want to do ratchet drag next week, give uh, me some tips. You know, could you could you give me some tips?" And I was like, "Didn't I say? <laughs> didn't I just say that Derek was gonna make a shitty comment?" She goes, "Yeah, and I did." And then that's when then I that's when I hit her with the, "What if you want to do memorable drag next week? I can give you some tips." And then it just came on. Then it started spiraling spiraling and then she goes and then Bob got so very aggressive to, Bob said she goes oh, I just have to not wear hair <laughs> oh, I have to just not wear hair and, and well the judge said that I'm beautiful if I just don't wear hair too and I was like oh she is really trying to be cute right now she's trying to be cute cute and, Bob, and then, then, then something about hurt feelings she, then Bob goes if I want to hurt your feelings you'd be, you be crying right now bitch and I was like oh my god this is so out of character <laughs> actually this is the Bob I know this is the real Bob actually that's the real Bob that we all know first of all I've never hidden myself unlike you I, the way the, the Bob on t- drag race is the Bob in real life honey that, 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 that picture I posted on your birthday when you literally were about to physically strike me on the podcast there's documented proof of, yeah. me of, your, of your abusive and aggressive behavior with me on the podcast 
I want to point out that I have the difference is me and you. I've never pretended like I was some little frail, scared bitch. You tried to come for me on my. You tried to you tried to scare me, and bitch, you got scared. I to scare you? Yes, you did. You faked a thing. You you, you must have forgot the clip. Jacob Bob, did you. In your house. House. That, was, that, was, that was a roach in your there house. There was no roaches. You clearly forgot. You clearly forgot. Jacob texts you. Try to act, act like this. Act like you see something on the ground, so and then you and then you acted. <laughs> yeah, but bitch, Jacob don't control your mind, bitch. You acted. And I reacted. You tried to get cute, and I got cuter. <laughs> um, and then, then there it goes. I will never. This is this is my. I will never cry over you or anyone else. ever. No, it was. I will never cry over you ever. Is what it is. <laughs> And you know, to be fair, Derek was a person of his word. Derek has never cried over you or anyone. <laughs> That's not true. Derek cried on the way out of the door. Derek cried on, last, on her last episode. But it wasn't over you. He said, I'll never you cry over you. You, ever. you don't know why Derek was crying. You have no clue why Derek was crying. I, Derek and I, we, we conversed before this podcast and they confirmed. I'm sure. Um, and then I, that's when I, I said, don't give me a challenge, bitch, which was. <laughs> Oh, it was oh, spicy. Well, I think that was like probably the biggest. That was probably the spiciest moment of the season. I mean, well, you clearly, later okay, on, it's, it's been a while because you you must, you must have not watched it for a while because Derek and Naomi go at it really hard yeah, later during on, the like ball, like during really the, during, hard during the during the paper ball, right, or something like that. I can't remember which episode it was. I think it might have been the paper ball, but yeah, they went. Well, it had to be at least an episode because the episode that Derek went home with that episode. Yeah, so it was episode. wild. It was a wild. It was wild, wild. Yeah. Yeah. So then y'all all go home, get a good night, good night's rest, and then y'all come back into the workroom the next day, and um, you're and then you you you're talking about how you're a morning person. You, I, I feel like when. You, I feel like my experience drag race kind of, but I've, I've, I've always been a morning person, but when you have to wake up that early and be alert, like you cannot choose to be groggy and fucked up. Like you have to choose to like be a real person or else you're just going to be fucking miserable. I don't think people choose to be groggy and fucked up. <laughs> I don't think people are actively choosing the lifestyle of grog and fucked up. I think some people just have a hard time waking up in the morning. And, and I don't, I, I've never had a, I, even before drag race, I never had a hard time waking up when I wake up. But I would just wake up later in the day because I would get home at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. So I, I never I never had a hard time waking up. And I think we've proved on this podcast that you're the baby in the morning. No. <laughs> and you're the one. Well, okay, no. okay, sure. That one in Aspen. Bob, I have known you for going on 10 years now. Many times I would okay. walk into your apartment mm-hmm. in the morning and, and wake you up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And the, all your friends have confirmed this. Even your boyfriend who This is, is not working, true. Not all of my friends have confirmed this. Your boyfriend who has worked Who are the friends with, confirming this? Mateo, Patty has. Even your boyfriend who no, works on this podcast has once. confirmed that when you wake up that you are a toddler, Bob. Well, Monet, let's put it this way. I have video footage of you. You. Proof, you too. ocular proof, as you say, ocular proof of you waking up, being like, "I'm very, I'm actually Nigga a very ditto. good morning person." Nigga did it. Also, I was on vacation. I was on an ass with my man, and we was fucking until the wee hours of the morning. So I didn't get as much sleep as you. What, what, I what do you think? I was on vacation. What, was I was I not in Aspen? Where, where was I? Somewhere else? What did I fly in that morning? Did I, I fly in, you, land there? I, I don't know if you was getting your back blown out until an hour before the podcast. I don't know what you was doing, but that's what I was up to. Okay, but you, that is, you, <laughs> all, all I know is camera on it goes. <laughs> all I know for sure is that we have we have uh, to quote Monet ocular proof that you're not little Miss uh, little Miss Sunshine in the morning like like you claim to be. <laughs> okay, little Miss. I never said I, never said I was this nigga go trying to focus his camera. <laughs> I wasn't focusing. I was moving my camera down. I wasn't I focusing. I was sliding. Is you trying to go? I was not focusing. I was sliding my camera down. <laughs> Why is it so funny? I just love watching you t- toggle with technology. It's very cute. I literally am just sliding my camera from one side of my computer to the next. I don't know what is so funny about me going from here to here. Why is that so funny? I'm literally just sliding a camera. I mean, if, if, if you're this is McLab, I can't wait to get you to the next show. I literally just slid a camera down. You are cackling. Bob, are you, can you believe that Colleen, but let me say something, Colleen Exchange made her Drag Race debut before any of y'all bitches will ever be on the show. Colleen had her own segment. <laughs> Who are you talking to right now? Who are you talking to? 
Are you talking to the to our listen to our listeners? No. Are you being this aggressively rude? <laughs> then who who are who are you bitches then? <laughs> I'm talking to your friend that's in the in the hotel room with you right now. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, first of all, me and Jacob were in two different hotel rooms, first of all. I'm in this room by myself. Let's make that clear. Wait, he went to another hotel room? Jacob is Jacob has his own hotel room. Oh. <laughs> Jacob, put your fucking camera off, bitch. <laughs> So, so y'all heard money talking about your money say before any of you raggedy bitches of your drag was wild when they this is how you talk to your listeners. You talking to our listeners? Oh, holy shit! Oh my god, really quick. I did, I did, um, I did my show at, at, at um, I love doing going to doing like the stand up venues and the, and the patrons come. The patrons be repping hard at the show. The patrons be yeah, out here. I fucking love. It. I, I met I met Cheesome, and you know you know some certain things stick out to you. And meeting Cheesome, I fucking she was great. She had a great question. I did I did this thing at the end when I did a little a little like five minute question answer because we were really going off and she was like two questions have you ever called andy saying the word nigga and <laughs> what did you so do? answer the question and i said i wish a nigga would if andy short fixed his lips to say the end when i tell you it's about to be baby where we, we they, we're having a physical altercation well, you better gag because I have some video. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> anyway, back to season eight. Get, get ready to fight. Get ready to fight your little your little boyfriend. <laughs> Y'all gonna rumble in the in the fucking sobriety bus. Catch that nigga at the wheel. <laughs> Robbie, Robbie turned to try to come at you a little bit. She's like, she's like, Bob, Bob, you're you're a, you're a, you're a, you're all day type of person. Whatever she said. Yeah, she's like you're a morning, noon, and night kind of person. I was like, yeah, I'm excited to be on my on on Drag Race. This y'all fucking sad, bitter clowns are <laughs> just sad to be here, bitch. <laughs> Let that be you, bitch. I'm not sad to be here. I'm happy. <laughs> I hate when fucking like sad ass people want you to be sad with them, bitch. Get your little sad ass on. You you are choosing violence on today. <laughs> Me, but you just call all our listeners broke bitches who'll never be on Drag Race. <laughs> Um, uh, so so they Ru Ru announces what when Ru did that that little that little uh, trickery that he y'all were gonna be going down Hollywood Boulevard and doing uh uh, uh getting car carcasses. Did you think that it was like gonna be some real crazy challenge or did you? Did yeah, we did. No, we really thought it was gonna be it. We were like, oh wow, that's kind of weird. But some of us were actually like, we're kind of into it. That'd be really exciting. Work, but alas, it was not. It was the snatch game. Twas Snatch Game. We have RuPaul's announced it is going to be the Snatch Game, which is roughly the halfway point for most seasons, unless you're an All Star Seven, and then it's the second episode. But um, you know, it's the halfway point for most seasons, and it was a very, very um, exciting announcement. And of course, I really love Snatch Game, and I love an opportunity to like act and improv and and cut up, you know. But you said you have a what, okay. What is this special connection you have with Kara Channing? What 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 is this connection that you have with her? You're like you're like I I have this character, I have this one, but I really have a special connection with Kara Channing. What is this what is this connection? I never heard of it. Oh, I really like Carol Channing. I like Carol Channing since I was very young. I remember being um, watching the Tony Awards when I was in like maybe tenth grade or something, and Carol Channing came on and did a uh, she presented an award with LL Cool J, um, mm. and I remember being like, oh my god, who is this? Who is this lady? Like. I, that's when I first saw her. She had her glasses on. I remember asking my mom, I was like, who is that? My mom was like, oh, that's Carol Channing. And then I went to school the next day and I asked my theater teacher, like, can you tell me about Carol Channing? This is before Wikipedia. This is before you can like look things up on the internet. Cheryl Channing. That easily. Mm -hmm. I was like, can you please tell me about, about, um, Cher about Carol Channing? And, um, and then I started looking up, looking up her movies and her um, Broadway stuff and her cabaret stuff. And I just love her. She's so wonderful. What you is know, this? You know how you... Like, like, do you think she's she's very she's very talented? Yeah, I think she's really funny. I think she's really talented. Yeah, is she still kind of like the way you connect Rihanna. No, Carol Channing is not alive. Carol Channing passed away um a sh at like they like ninety seven, I think. Oh, wow, a few a few years after my season, she passed away. Damn. Oh, did she? Oh, because she did a video at your finale, right? For you? Yes, she did. Yes, right. she did. And I also wrote in a little op ed for I think Billboard about Carol Channing when she passed away. Work. And um, everyone's going around saying the characters, and Naomi, Naomi, Naomi's like she she wants to do Whoopi, but you bust out your Whoopi. No, and full of what you wasn't going to do Whoopi. You were you were trying to intimidate Naomi Smalls not to do Whoopi, Bob. And I see what you're doing. That's not true. First of all, I I assure you, 
I was not worried about Naomi Smalls for Snatch Game. I assure you oh that I wasn't like, God. oh God, if, if but if if Naomi does Whoopi, I won't be able to. I I promise you that was not. You think I you think I brought a Whoopi Goldberg costume to Drag Race with the intention of possibly maybe down the line intimidating a person who I had not didn't even know at the time when I packed it. Is that is that is that, your, is that what you think? Okay, so 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 tell me the order. Make it make sense. No, no, make your no, make no, your no, okay, theory make I'm, sense. I'm, I'm, I'm about to find a whole new thing. So what is the order of who you're gonna do? Like who was like your who you were like one two three rank rank your characters. Was Whoopi number one? I didn't or two? have them. I didn't have them in a ranking. I didn't go in with a ranking. I, I had three characters that I worked on. And I took them all inside. So I want to hear this. So do you think I made a Whoopi Goldberg costume in the room? Do you think I I brought it as an intimidation tactic? I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in your theories. I think okay. First of all, you you had like eighteen afros. Like you just carry afros, and so the afro was was gonna be there regardless. The the the, 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 the little nun habit that was not even your costume. That was that was um, Robbie Turner's costume, and Robbie confirmed that back when the season was airing that that was Robbie Turner's uh uh habit costume. Bitch, you're lying more than Robbie Turner is right now. You are lying more Maybe than yo good Judy Robbie Alexa, Turner. Call Robbie Turner. Yeah, into your switch, I'm sure. Um, you and I, so that 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 habit was actually given to me by a drag queen named Sister Mary Sister Helen, Helen, who gave me that uh, that habit uh, years ago when I wanted to do Whoopi for Halloween. Me and my friend Frosty went out as uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Annie Lennox. <laughs> Did they do something together? Why those two? <laughs> no, because because Frosty kind of looked like Annie Lennox. I kind of like Whoopi Goldberg, so we just went out as those two people. Um, but it was, I was really, uh, but I, but I, I bought three options. I thought, I, I think everyone who goes to Snatch Game should bring three options. That is, that is my, in my opinion. And I think that my, um, I didn't, I chose not to do Whoopi because I don't, I don't do a great Whoopi Goldberg impersonation, vocally speaking. Mm, got it. Yeah. Um, everyone's going to run. And I, I mean, again, it was different times, right? This is 2015 when y'all taped this. 2015, well, before 16. you get to Derek Barry, because I didn't get to Derek Barry, I was so shocked when I watched this episode back. When Thorgy was talking shit about me on camera, bitch, the way I was blown away watching it from home, I had no clue. I'm telling you, every time they set me down in interviews, I was like, Thorgy's my best friend here. I love Thorgy. She's so fun. We, She's my oldest drag friend. We're like sisters, sisters. And then Thorgy's like, Bob's excelling and it's pissing me off. I Bob, shut up. Oh, I hate Bob. It, she did not say she hates all, Bob. She did not say she hates Bob. Not this episode. She did say it, though. She says that she hates you. At some point, she probably was like, "Ugh, I hate Bob. Ugh, Bob, shut up. Ugh, Bob, Bob's success is pissing me off." And I never knew Thorgy was saying any of this. Was all news to me watching the show. Well, Bob, you shouldn't have pissed Thorgy off. There it is. By Victor. doing well, I was pissing her off, or I, by excelling, I was pissing Thorgy off. Um, so we're doing the characters, and I know Tito J. Derek's. Okay, first of all, Laura Bill Bundy, that's the white bitch that did um, Legally Blonde, right? The Broadway bitch? Yeah, she's from Hairspray and Legally Blonde are her two big things. She's 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 Elle Woods from the original Broadway cast Legally Blonde. And when was she doing this black character? Like what like this So Laura Bell Bundy had a website where she had all this like it's like this like town where she had all these characters in the town. And the most popular one was a character named Show Cantel Brown. You cause you, you just is, have it in a mix, right? Yeah, my name is Show Can Tell Brown, and I show can tell that you need to come down to I Believe and blah, blah, blah. It was this, like, this uh, character that she had. She didn't do it. It wasn't in blackface, but it was black coat. It was a black coated character. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And then, but Derek Barry choosing to do that for Snatch Game. Again, it was different times. 2015, I will say things have definitely changed. I don't think Derek would do that now. But the fact that Derek walked onto Drag and was like, I'm going to do this black. <laughs> character and I will say it was a good impersonation Derek slapped that fucking bus driver wig on she started moving her neck and she's like could you show uh -uh. I was like oh okay <laughs> Derek you've been doing a character study <laughs> no yeah Derek decided Derek decided but it, it was not received well in the room so I mean I will say it was, it was a different time but at the time it wasn't that different because most folks in the room was like not this a lot of right. us were like, not this. Right. And those reactions to Derek Barry doing the show Can't Tell Brown, those were real reactions. <laughs> us being like... <laughs> Did you tell him? 
I don't think I said anything to Derek. I was just kind of like, girl, do your thing. You do you, you, you do you, and I'm going to do me. I'm over here trying to pick between my three characters. Yeah. And I feel like, is Kim the first one? I don't know the character. The fans will correct me if I'm wrong. Is Kim the first person who did like a made up character like this? You've been doing Kimmy John Un? Um, no. I don't, I, to be honest, I'm not sure. I was trying to think. I'm I can't think sure. of anyone else who's done that before. Well, she did it. Well, guess what, Mo- Mo- Monet? She did. No, she did. Have a little, Is this little bit Raven character. Mimi I'm first? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also, you know who actually did do a black person was Thor. G- oh yeah. <laughs> As if the dreadlocks were not enough, she's like, I'm really go go. <laughs> she did. Like okay, Thor, she was playing a black person. <laughs> Don't you forget Michael Jackson was black. Oh my God, problematic for me. Bitch, you forgot too for a second. No, I did not. I, I didn't never forget. Was, forgot. I get didn't forget. He was what black. makes you think I forgot Michael Jackson was black? No, what in this conversation makes you think? I did not think. I did not forget Michael Jackson was black. I forgot Thorgy was white. <laughs> That's what happened to me. My <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, but but, and I don't think there's anything wrong with imitating with with impersonating black people as a white person, as long as you're not doing blackface. Like if you like, there, like there's this guy on TikTok who actually has a really great Eddie Murphy impersonation, but he's not like. Anyway, for like for example, I did Carol Channing. You know what I mean? I I, I, I don't think what, what Thor did was actually problematic at all. Can I tell you for I, this is really quick for All Star Seven? I for the Dolly, I was you know how remember when I did my Grace Jones and I did white? I was I wanted to mm-hmm. paint as I wanted to do white face for her. No, what stopped you? I didn't have enough you time because we did it right you after scared. the challenge. You were scared. <laughs> we Say you scared. We did it right. After Say you scared of white people. Say you're afraid of white people. You're afraid of you're afraid of white people. <laughs> you're afraid of upsetting your white fan base. We did it right after the challenge, and you know when you do when you do a challenge and you have the runner, you have maybe forty five minutes, and there was no way I could have undid all my makeup and did it again. I don't know. I, I've seen Raja do some really different makeup Raja the runway. No, Raja, the bitch who's dusting you on All Star Seven. <laughs> That Raja. Oh my God. Raja, the blueprint for your success. <laughs> that Raja. Yeah. Now, do you remember Raja all of a sudden? Did that help your little brain? <laughs> you are such a fucking troll. Raja, the one who got Violet taken off of Fashion Photo Review. That Raja. Wait, did she really? Honey. No, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, know, you know they shut it down? Yeah, Raja got that shut down, honey. <laughs> Never forget. Um, Roger, yeah. who dusted you on the Kelly Clarkson show in that lip sync? <laughs> Roger, let you have it. You are so ridiculous. did you did you beat Roger on the lip sync? <laughs> she has those it big was, eyebrows. It was, and it it was you a competition, up. bitch. It was a competition. And if it, but it, if it was, but when it was a competition, bitch, I won. But when it was, Roger dusted you. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we were there the for the we were there for the for the for the commencement speeches. We were all there for the commencement speeches, honey. Roger, let you have it. So dumb. Yeah, 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 nigga, yeah. It's like Thor, you let you have it in the snatch game, but we're gonna get to that. Are you missing out on one of your favorite shows because it's not available in your region? Listen, trying to keep your private time private. Well, let me introduce Nord VPN. If you're bored with US Netflix, why not take it for a spin on the UK, honey? Using Nord VPN and a click of a button, you can do just that. No need to travel to Japan for your favorite anime when Nord VPN brings it right to you with 5,000 plus server options. No show is out of your reach. Listen, we all love to binge, but privacy is a big deal, too. NordVPN keeps your information encrypted so you never have to worry about your IP or location getting out. They've also doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection features. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an infected file, threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it makes it a mess on your computer. Now, don't forget, there's literally no risk to you with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Give it a try, and if you like it, great. If you don't... They'll issue a refund, and you can pretend the entire situation never happened. Check out our link, nordvpn.com slash sibling, to get your subscription started today. That's nordvpn.com slash sibling. N-O-R-D-V-P-N dot com slash sibling. Um, so y'all are <laughs> in the Snatch Game, and I have to say, off the bat, Betty looks horrible. The wig is horrible. Her makeup looks crazy. She Betty looks nothing looks... like Nancy Grace. <laughs> nothing, nothing on like her Nancy is Grace. giving Nancy Grace, except the fact that she's wearing a blazer. The fact that she's wearing a blazer is the only thing giving Nancy Grace. I don't so know bad. what that wig was supposed to be. 
<laughs> I have, I'm so shook. <laughs> and Nancy Grace is actually a very funny character to do. She's from Georgia, yeah. by the way. Um, she, oh she was God. a public defender in Georgia. Um, Nancy Grace is a, such a funny character to do. So I just don't understand what went wrong. And Betty's like, a good I don't actress. Betty is like good at theater. I don't understand like what. Like it was. It was well, just let's, a really let's, bad let's go down the line one by one. Let's go down the line one by one instead of jumping around. Michael Jackson. So I thought that Thorgy did a pretty good job as Michael Jackson. Thorgy was very funny. I love that she, she her little attention to detail with the, like the band aids on her fingers. Yeah. <laughs> um. The ha- the fact that she had a, bl- a little blanket doll there ready, that like good. that shit was really funny to me. And the way she goes, <laughs> <laughs> and also, and that thing Thorgy do the the the, the, the Thorgy like does that in real life. Like that is a, a tick Thorgy does. She's like, so it was like really easy for her to access that. But it was great. I thought her Michael Jackson was great. She looked the part too. And I'm intrigued by the notion of um, Kim saying that she's like Kimmy Jong Un because. I don't. I don't see any drag in this character at all. Like, where is the drag? Like, I mean, like she's like Kim Jong Un as a drag queen, but like this is just this is, is just Kim Jong Un. That's why she said Kimmy Jong Un. She at one point she goes. There's two different things they said. At one point they said Kimmy Jong Un, the the like the dictator as a drag queen, and there's also where someone else said a Kim Jong Un sister. So the story kind of just had to like change throughout the course of the thing. Right. But at this point I don't know why she didn't just say it was just straight up Kim Jong Un because it's just Kim in the Kim Jong Un outfit. Yeah, I I was getting just Kim. I, I thought I thought I thought she was saying like Kim Jong Un's sister Kimmy. That's what I thought. I didn't no, know she was like being a it was drag two, queen. It was, I would tell you, it was two things. When she first said it, it was Kim Jong-un as a drag queen. And then somewhere somewhere down the line, it became Kim Jong-un's sister. <laughs> it was like two different, it was it was two different stories. And why does Kim look so short? Was she like sitting lower in her chairs to make us look tiny? Well, maybe, maybe, and maybe she's got her shoulders, I mean, maybe part of it is her head being hunched down like that the whole time. Maybe, that seems like it would be really annoying. But, but yeah, it was a very like, funny character though. Yeah, I thought Kim was a funny character. I thought I, I thought I thought it was a, it was a, a, a good snatch game. Now, Miss Nancy Grace, we're um, gonna talk about that. Acid look, just she just looks horrible. I don't know. She, well, do you know what she looks like? You remember in Mrs. Doubtfire when he's trying on the different wigs and he does the the, the, the Barbara Streisand? That's what she looks like. Honestly, you're not wrong. <laughs> she looks like the Barbara Streisand Mrs. Doubtfire. Look uh, like. So then um, Robbie Turner does Diana Vreeland, which after seeing Rogers. a good interpretation of <laughs> Diana Vreeland, I was like, this is, because, first of all, did you all, like, Diana Vreeland fully has an accent, like, has a, yeah. Diana Vreeland has a full on <laughs> accent, she's French, and Robbie Turner just didn't even, just chose just like, oh. Robert not to do the I voice. I am American, American. She's like, <laughs> she was just an American accent, like no French anything. She pops a pill, RuPaul. She pops a pill. Lay- yeah. Layla McQueen always says that. Layla McQueen would just, we'll be sitting around, Layla McQueen would just randomly say, she pops a pill, RuPaul. She also set herself up. She's like, you know, my sisters, Benda LaCreme and Jinx Monster, they both won their Snatch Games. Like, I'm from Seattle. I'm going to dominate it. So people, she set herself up for these, like, really high stakes that she could not fulfill. Yeah, this was, this was a bad choice for so many reasons. She, she also... She maybe sort of kind of looks like Diana Vreeland, but then again, not to compare. Obviously, at the time, there was no Raja to compare it to. But man, <laughs> man, <laughs> if only she had the foresight to know that Raja would crush it down the line, you know? And then I forgot to make this note when they do the critiques later. I don't know why it's so funny. Carson was like, you were trying to go for Nancy Grace. This is to Betty. But you look like a white Shaka Khan. I'm like, I don't even yeah. get Shaka Khan. But I just I just think that it's so funny for whatever fucking reason. Anyway, um, Naomi Smalls as New York. She had such a strong start. When RuPaul said, New York in the motherfucking house. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And then it just. But she also looks nothing like New York. She has the tiniest titties, and she was <laughs> obsessed with this. She probably knew it was obsessed with the idea of like she's using her real hair yes. in the front. And the idea was she was like, it's gonna. It's, she, I think she was trying to say that she thinks that New York's wigs are bad, and she was trying to show that New York's oh, wigs were bad. Oh, I didn't get that. I thought she was just trying to give like realness, like real, like well, like 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 lace, like Wamana. 
No, she was she was trying to insinuate that 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 New York has wigs are not blended nicely. Got it. <laughs> Got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. I, but Na- Naomi just did a Naomi did a very bad job. This was this was not, I mean there and honestly, when she said clock and RuPaul was like a big clock. We love a big clock, and she was like, yeah, yeah, they're cool. I, mean, I was like, girl, this is really an opportunity to volley back and forth with RuPaul, and you were just not taking it yeah. at all. Yeah, there's a made a few flavor flavor references. A joke about flavor of love. Yeah. Um, Chi Chi Devane is Eartha Kitt. I thought this was great. I thought she did. She had a strong snatch game. I agree. She did a very good job. And um, Betty did. Betty, Betty, in true Betty form was just being like, "Oh, she never did that, bitch." And I was like, <laughs> the Betty. I, I was like, "Oh, because your Nancy Grace is crushing. Because your Nancy <laughs> Grace is crushing right now." Yeah, Betty was definitely jealous of Chi Chi for sure because she was doing really poorly. Betty didn't even have any jo- anyway. Yeah, Betty was did a really bad job, but uh, Chi Chi did. She, she, did she, great. she was she was like, oh because she's oh because that's what cats do. I was like, this bitch is mean. <laughs> when Chi Chi put her leg up, it started licking and clearing and stuff. I thought that was funny. I thought it was cute. I agree. And then we have Derek Barry, who did a did a very Derek was very funny. Derek did a very good job. I'm very glad that Derek Barry chose Britney Spears. <laughs> Yeah, it was good for her. And, you know, this, this is, for all the future people, just because Michelle says something on the runway, like, don't be scared to not ever do it. Like, this is a, if Derek would have not had done Britney Spears, and then maybe Shook and Tell would have been great, too, uh, it, with all of his problems. But, like, she did the thing that she's good at, and she nailed it. Like, Michelle is not the arbiter of Drag Race. Michelle does not, uh, she's not the final say. She is one of the arbiters of Drag Race. But she's Michelle not the is final quite say. literally one of the arbiters RuPaul, of Drag Race. RuPaul, Ru- 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 literally says... I can settle with the judges, but I don't give a fuck. This is my show. I, I'm going to make the final yeah. decision. Bitch, just make RuPaul. If you make RuPaul with the judges. laugh, if you if you make RuPaul laugh and you're strong with RuPaul, who gives a fuck? That's what that is what your goal is. It's to make RuPaul fucking kiki kaka. I agree, but I'm just saying RuPaul. Dear, Michelle is one of the adjudicators of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, and then we have uh, Bob the Drag Queen who did uh, Uzo Aduba. And Carol Channing, which I thought was very honestly great job. I, to be I, did, I, I didn't think you, I think you did a great fucking job as Uza and also as Carol Channing when you when you did the switch. How long how, <clears throat> how long did you take? Did it take for you to change? I mean, it didn't take any time at all. I just I just took off my um. I had the I think I feel like I may have had the turtleneck under no no I must have not had the turtleneck underneath. No, I just took my shirt off because RuPaul. So RuPaul does this thing, which I did not know until I got there. RuPaul, I don't know if she does it all the time. But I don't know if she. Did, I can confirm she did it one time at least. RuPaul looked at us and said, "All right, y'all, one last question. Make this one count." That's what she said mm-hmm. to us. We, there's one question left. Make this one count. And I said, "Okay." So I, cause I, I snuck in the Carol Channing outfit underneath my my um my unif my, my uniform. I was like, I, I really want to do this 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 look. So I snuck it in. I didn't I didn't ask anyone about this. I never asked. I was just like, I'm doing this. I'm gonna make this happen myself. And when RuPaul said one left, I was like, now's my chance to do it. Um I even still had the the Uzo Aduba gap in my teeth. And and like I had to like scratch it off. Like, so when you did that, where everyone was, everyone like on set and like all the girl, other girls watching, like, what the fuck is Bob doing? Like, how long? How like how long did it take you? Was it like five seconds? Was it maybe, five minutes? Maybe maybe like maybe fifteen seconds. Maybe and people were just watching you. Like, what is Bob doing? Probably, you know, I was look, I was changing clothes. I wasn't looking at them. I was trying to get my my costume on before. Luckily, I was at the very end. You know, RuPaul right. goes in. So y'all don't realize RuPaul goes in. Or every every question is in order. They skip people each time, but every question goes from. Michael Jackson all the way down to Uzo Aduba. Yeah. So I happened to be in a very good spot. Uh, I, I really lucked out with where I was. And I switched out my clothes. And, and then as soon as I switched, as I was writing my name, you see my name says uh, Carol Chan. And RuPaul uh-huh. goes, look who's joined us. Carol Channing's here. And then that's when I, I, I cool. he was like, well, hello, good, hello RuPaul. Uh, Uzo Abubu couldn't finish the episode, so I decided to step in. Um, and honestly, I'm very, I, it worked out. Um, I was accused of showboating. Oh, yeah, Michelle, you're showboating. What, 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 what do you have to say to that, Bob? Well, I think that I, I think that what I did this season worked out well for me, and I'm really glad I made the decisions I made. Do you think that her. Michelle had any validity in, it, in her critique of your showboating? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Michelle's the first person to ever say anything like that to me. Um, but I didn't let it affect me in the show. Right. There you have it, ladies you know. and gentlemen. Michelle's not the arbiter of drag race, Monet. Actually, she is. She's one of the adjudicators, though. Um... And th- I think that we, I think this was, a, I actually think this was a pretty strong Snatch game. It was overall. The only, the only duds were Nancy Grace, New York, and Dan of Real. Everyone else was good. So only three out of and three, three out of eight out of ain't five. bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, that's those are great. That's a great odds. And uh, let's talk about so um, let's talk about oh, we didn't have a brief discussion about Chanel. Aman and Gigi Hadid. They were such interesting Snatch Game guests because, like, they, there was a few things they didn't know. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't they didn't know what voguing was. They had never heard of voguing. Really? Yeah, they were like, "Oh, the Vogues." And then she was like, "There was a moment I can't remember what it was." They're like, "Voguing? What do you mean Vogue?" And then I think RuPaul was like, like on the cover, like I think I think someone said on the cover of a magazine because it's a line from the song Vogue. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then she goes, "Oh, you mean like?" <laughs> and then we were like, "Kind of, I, actually." I, I, I'm gonna Google. How old is Gigi Abella Hadid? Was there? They Gigi. were. One of them was a teenager at the time. One of them was like 19 or 17 at the time. Chanel Iman. I think Chanel Iman is really. Or maybe it was Gigi, Gigi Hadid is 27. Gigi Hadid is 27 now, and Bob season was six years ago? Seven years ago. She was 20 so years old at the time. And, she, and how old is, is Chanel Iman now, Jacob? We're getting our intel. What, 31? Oh, she's 31. 31. So she was, she, was, she, was about, she was 25. She was 24. So they were like 19, 20 or 19, depending on when, what time of year she turns whatever age. You mm-hmm. know, it, it, was, it was in the early, early summer. Yeah. Yeah, she was pretty young. Yeah. Work. Oh my god, me and Chanel Iman are the same age. Work. Um and then so so we get to the runaway. This is one of the most infamous runaways. This this is the first time it's happened and you have so many different looks. There were it was a, the night of a, a night the night or a night of a thousand Madonnas. Night of a thousand Madonnas. The night of a thousand Madonnas. Um and It was just it's just night of a thousand Madonnas, not the uh, night, it's just night, night of a thousand Madonnas. One night of a thousand Madonnas. Okay, go sure. No, night of a thousand Madonnas. Are you doing a thing? Continue. The night of a thousand Madonnas. What I said. We're saying different things. I'm saying night of a thousand Madonnas, and you're saying the night of a thousand Madonnas. There. Oh, got it. Okay. Because there's because because there, 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 there's a there's a lot there's a lot of party. There's like a party in New York City a while back called night of, night of a thousand shares, but it's not the night. It's just night of a thousand shares. Okay, so the, the runway this week was a night of a thousand Madonnas, and um. <laughs> oh my God! How do you? You're ridiculous. Continue. <laughs> and this is the infamous runway because y'all had kimono gate. So they all had to do obviously do Madonna looks, and four girls came with kimonos. Incorrect. Bitch, six girls came with kimonos. Two of the kimonos had already been eliminated. Who? Cynthia Lee Fontaine and Nisha Lopez also had kimonos. Really? Yes. Wow. Six girls brought kimonos. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. That is really crazy. And the gag is six kimonos, and but no one. There was only one of her like really iconic looks, which was Chi Chi did a cone look. No one did like a virgin. No one did. Uh, um, uh, no one did uh, uh, a Vogue. Like like I'm like those are, like I like what like I, I can no one. I guess people thought other people would do that, so they so they went a, a crazy direction. Even you, like yours is you. T- well, well, you know, let's 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 go to the looks one by one. So real quick, it, it, it was it was it was it ended up being nine thousand kimonos, and I think the reason I think what happened was when you're on drag, everyone's trying so hard to think out of the box. Instead, of, actually, I don't know. Maybe everyone is actually I don't know why. Maybe they're all literally just doing what they what their first inclination is. And by the way, Chi Chi's um, cone bra, she made that there. Chi Chi didn't have a Madonna look. Okay, wait. Well, let's let's go in order, bitch. So first of all, Michelle's actually kind of doing a, a Madonna look, which is she which looks is. great. This is it's, it's very uh, Madonna from the um, I think it's the Madame X store. Yeah, and I fucking I didn't forgot RuPaul had this fully stoned burgundy chocolate stone gown, and it is bitch. It RuPaul looks great. I love this. I want this gown. It's very simple. This is giving black Marilyn Monroe. 
Well, I don't think it's supposed to be skin tone. I don't think RuPaul's dress is supposed to be skin. This is it's much darker than her skin, and I think Merrill was supposed to mimic skin. Mimic, yeah, uh, yeah, not exactly, illusion. but the same thing, like a fully encrusted, simple dress. Gown. I think that uh, one of the uh, models, I don't know which, I can't, I don't really know which one's which Chanel one. Chanel anyway. is the black girl. Uh, Gigi Hadid is the white girl. You said the black girl and the black girl. Black girl. Chanel Iman is the black girl. Gigi Hadid is the white girl. So she wearing the inside out pants, and I'm like, I guess this is fashion. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's cute. Actually, I'm not into it. I'm like, this bitch is wearing inside out pants. Like, <laughs> honestly, I feel like sometimes fashion is just pranking us. Like, I feel like the fashion world is literally just pranking us, and it's like sometimes it's like they're just seeing what they can get away with and, and trick us into thinking it looks nice. This bitch is wearing inside out pants. I'm dead. <laughs> So let's um, with the, wait, wait, so we're, real quick, are we, we're not, we are not about to talk about Nine Thousand Madonnas without my, talking about my fucking week with Madonna, bitch. We're well, not, yes. we're not glossing. We're not glossing. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. We're okay. not, we're not pulling a Monet, we're not pulling a Monet and guy control. <laughs> Gloss. <laughs> you are so ridiculous. <laughs> bitch, I had that credit on my IMDb that I was in God control, bitch. You ain't getting no credit for this motherfucker show you this. Oh, you, get, let's get this that is, you are absolutely wrong. I, bitch, I have a full on creative credit, literal creative credit for helping Madonna Where? create on IMDb? her project. Let me see it. For, helping, for literally helping Madonna create her prize show. show. Show it. Where's Penny. the receipts? Where's the receipts? Henny. Where's the Penny. receipts? Credit card book. Where's the receipts? Where's the fucking receipts, baby? Bottle Brando, Jimmy Dean. Yeah, they're not existing. Bitch, bitch. You're, 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 you're a receipt. You're a fan of snap, but your receipts. It is, Kelly, is disintegrated. Jean, picture of the beauty queen. When they, so let's do it right now. your week with Madonna. So, I got a call when I was uh, uh, filming We're Here, being like, hey, Madonna's having a party in New York. She wants you to um, host a party, like just kind of be at the party and like just be in attendance. And I, and I was like, you know, I, I would love to. I can't do it, though, because of my schedule with We're Here. And I love Madonna, but I cannot do it. And they were like, well, she really wants you. And I said, I'll just ask you if I, can, if I work something out. But the only way I will do it is if Madonna's there and I can get a picture with her. That's the only way I can do it. If Madonna's there, I can do it, get a picture with her. Um, and then they were like, um, okay, we'll... we'll Okay, so I said, they, they came back, I said, you know, it's a no. I literally, does my schedule will not allow it. And then she was like, um, they were like, Madonna's not taking no for an answer. She wants you. And I was like, if it's just hosting a night, any drag queen can do this. Why does it have to be me? Mm -hmm. and they're like, she wants you. Madonna wants you. She's asking for your phone number. Madonna wants your phone number. I said, well, you can give her a number, but I mean, I can't do the show. So I'm, I'm, I'm now texting back and forth with Madonna. And then she, like about when we can talk. And then she calls me. Me and Madonna have a phone call. And then we started um, basically um, right before the phone call. The my schedule shifts with we're here. We switch our schedule, and I'm I'm suddenly free. Right. So I was talking to Madonna on on a. I realized that as I was talking to her, it was like a creative call. Like oh like oh no this 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 is like we're actually like planning a show. So I schedule it. I'm like all right, I I can do it. I can rehearse in L. A. and I rehearse in New York City. I, we rehearse for a little bit over a week, um, every day for about about a week and a half um hanging out with madonna literally every day for like a week and a half Bad. kicking it with madonna miss chaconi honey me and miss chaconi hanging out they all call her m by the way m, m. yeah we, we called her that on set for god control as well m. <laughs> but you call her m because like, more than m she's out of your line of vision you're like m. <laughs> uh, so so we we have so we're like anyway she loves me we were cackling together she like uh i, I bonded with her son david banda who's, who's if i ever if i ever have a kid i would like them to be like david Banda. it was really really cool uh really cool really cool kid. he's like 16 years old uh he's, he was in the show too he was like he was like my sidekick in the show got it David Bender was. Um, and then it was Madonna me, Violet Chashki. Madonna had six, like, I think six kids. Work. Did not know that. All I knew is Lourdes. Yeah. Or, is it L Lourdes? Is her daughter? Well, yeah, her name, but she goes by Lola. Lola. Got it. And she and Lola's wow. the one Michelle who... And, and there are too many parallels between Michelle Visage and Madonna. Michelle Visage has a daughter named Lola. Bitch, are you think it's a coincidence? Bitch, Michelle is modeling her life. Michelle fully named her child. Probably named her because uh, I think I'm pretty sure Michelle's Lola is younger than Madonna's Lola. Yeah. Anyway, um, 
And so Lola recommend Lola was like, Mom, I love Bob the Drag Queen. And that's why mm-hmm. that's how it it was me, Violet Chashki, Laganja Estranja, Pixie Aventura, um, Jose Extravaganza, who's in, who's in the original Vogue video. Mm-hmm. Um uh Tokisha Extravaganza. Oh work. Tokisha and I said Tokisha. I think it's a Tokisha. No, Tokisha and which I just spent a whole week with Tokisha. And um and um Saucy Santana. Saucy. Uh, 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 he did. I saw he uh, he did. Um, Material Girl. Yeah, and then Madonna like rewrote a verse to Material Girl. I love that. And like performed it with with Saucy. That's so great. That's really great. But it was Madonna is a very hard worker. She like showed up to rehearse in full fucking drag, pumps, corset, oh, all yeah. of it. She's tiny, right? The bitch is small. You see Madonna because I mean, Madonna she always has she has like a big present, but she's small. She's not like freakishly small. She's about Kennedy's height, right? But when you're in, when you and me are in big drag queen heels, that is tiny. Kennedy, when Kennedy and Patty next to us, Kennedy and Patty look like babies. They look like children. For someone who's assigned female at birth, she's she's about five three, which is not she's not she's not big, but she she is short, I guess. Sure. Especially when you compare her to to, to me, and she got um, a big old booty. But she's not as tall as like like uh, what's her name from um. Abbott Elementary. She's tiny, tiny. Ab- uh, a Quinta? Yeah, Quinta's Quinta. like 4'10". She's like tiny, tiny. She's a tiny lady. I remember. Anyway, um, so I had a great time and um, I, I have a little vlog coming. Also, I made a little vlog. I'm going to blame it on the social, the political climate. I made a little vlog with a preview of my music on the Patreon and girl, it, it is getting dust. And I was like, I never get dust on the Patreon because I got dust on the I was like, not me getting dust on the Patreon, girl. Did you? Let me go see a little. Girl, I am getting dust on the Patreon. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, not the patrons, like, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame it on the political climate and everyone being stressed about. Um, I have posted a lot of stuff. I mean, I have been posting. I mean, from the beginning, posting tons of stuff on Patreon, but I was like, I have never, and I was like, I'm sharing my music with y'all, and I got like a little measly 27 <laughs> comments, I was like, I posted pictures, I posted but, a picture oh, of my oh, thumb. Oh, even, 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 our, even our first post has about 100, this is crazy. Girl, even, even when I post like a picture of like a fingernail, but I said, I play my music for them, they said, nigga, don't play no music ever again, stop doing music, nigga. <laughs> Stop doing music right the fuck now. I was like, oh my, my feelings are hurt. Oh, uh, but oh wait, so uh, so did you ask? We, you, can you text Madonna? See, she want to see. See, she'll be a guest on this episode about about the about the about the. the she already said no. She already said no. She, cause, oh. she, Cause she remembered you by name. At least we tried. She remembered. She, she said what she said with Monet. Mm. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll text Oprah. Oprah will come and do a be a guest. My homie. You better work. All right, let's go down the line. Look at these looks. It is kimono gate. It is nine of a thousand kimonos. Um, you had my favorite kimono. Really? Yes, I love the asymmetry of it. I love the. I love how she tied it in the middle with that like red rope thing. I love the cutouts. Thorgy had my favorite kimono. Interesting. Also, it was I, the most um, like the one from that Madonna had in the in the in the thing. Like it looked the most like Madonna's. This is Domino Couture. Work. And and Domino, it was like a borrow. Like Domino, Domino was like, she was like, can I get that kimono? And Domino was like, yeah, here, girl. <laughs> yeah, Thorgy, I'm a hero kimono. Um, Kimchi, I think Thorgy looks really good, though. I think that she looks great. And I think that, uh, I, the, she, that walk she was doing was very odd, though. It was, like, I, like, I, it, fit, it fit the style. It, it was just it was just an odd choice of walking, like looking around, really jerky. Um, I think Kim's kimono looks so good. I love Kim's kimono. I like Kim's, but it does, doesn't look like Madonna's from the thing, so I was confused. Maybe it's just inspired. You know what I mean? But the thing was to do a Madonna look. Like that's like I, I like that's crazy. Like if if you did like a Night of a Thousand Shares, and instead of doing like the black thing, you did like in like blue, and like it's like that's not what the assignment was. It was to do a Madonna look. Drag Kim. Um, also, Kim's trying to get this bag for me. Kim, you know that massive coach bag I have. Mm-hmm. Kim wants that bag, and she's like, "And I'll trade you a bag." Her. And I looked at the. 
Bitch, first of all, mind your fucking business. You give her your bag, bitch. But you don't want to talk about, I can get anything from Coach. Then, bitch, give her the bag. What do you care? Okay, I've never said I can get anything from Coach. I've never said the words, I can get anything from Coach. What if I said the words, I can get, I can get anything from Coach. When have I ever said that? We'll wait. I know you're trying to call Kennedy. She's not going to answer for you again, by the way. Kennedy, stay bl ignoring your calls. <laughs> this nigga probably getting this nigga probably getting dick. <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned! Please leave your message for. You're done. You're done, <laughs> Bob. You literally said to one of our friends, "Like, I, I don't want to uh, mess up your relationship with Coach. Like, just ju just just go on the website and, and tell me what you want. I'll get it for you." This is difference between saying I can get you a Coach bag and I can get anything from Coach. I can get people Coach bags. I did not say I can get anything from Coach. I can't like reach back okay, and get Bob, archival like, pieces okay, from Coach. Okay. Okay, sure, but you like you literally said go on the website get just tell me just go on the website tell me what you want I'll get it. That was you and I, yeah, and I probably got it for them. I said I can get you things from coach, and I just I can get anything. I cannot go back and get archival pieces. This purse they gave me is archival. I cannot go back and tell them to open their oh, vaults and give me back. shit. Patty, what did what did Bob say to you about about coach and when you wanted something? That he would get it for for me for free. Anything that you wanted, right? Which is anything. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Patty. Okay, we're gonna reiterate. You even said anything from the website, bitch. Not archival pieces. Nigga, you said anything. You're, you're, I just I, I sprinkled that in for your, no, for your benefit. So that Monet, you, you literally just said. I'm gonna show you why you're wrong. You literally just said go to the website and I can get you anything from the website. I did not say go back into the archives, get a 1978 purse. I did not say anything that coaches ever made. I said go to the website and I can get you something from there. Mm. Anyway, also I saw I saw one of your one of your arch nemesis at the airport today. <laughs> uh no, I don't know. So why is why is why is uh, she my arch nemesis? I told you she confronted me at a day, at, at a country call party one time. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> confronted me at a Taj Hall I said, this is wild. <laughs> this is wild. Okay. And anyway. The, the, the Kimono, the Derek Berry is li literally, <laughs> first of all, it's a crazy, <laughs> it's like a completely different color. It has like fucking pictures on it. I'm like, this is not the red Kimono, but like, it's just completely off the mark. I'm, I'm okay, whoa, confused. whoa, 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 baby, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? First of all, First of all, Derrick Berry's kimono looks amazing. That's one. Two, Madonna has probably worn like 20 different kimonos. You're thinking oh, of she? one kimono. Yes, Madonna has had like, Madonna had a whole kimono era. Okay, but the, well, 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 Drag Race, when each girl came out, they showed Madonna in that red kimono. Like that's what they, that, that's what the look they were going for. That's what they I kept think they were, I think they were driving. I think they were driving a point home. But Madonna has Madonna has worn a lot of kimonos. But anyway, side note, I think Derek's kimono looks really great. I think Derek was great. If it was, but I just thought it was going for that specific red one. I'm like, it's not even the same color. Um, how about um, Naomi Smalls' kimono is not great. This is not it. Yeah, this is also just a bad. This is a crazy picture of Naomi. This picture. Well, these these are the pictures they. By the way, I mean, this is no shade to the lady who's 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 taking our pictures, but like, these are the official pictures from Raw's Drag Race, and like, they did us dirty. With, like, I cannot believe that they hired someone to take these photos, and they're not just from a phone. Like, do you remember the lady with the with the professional camera Diana. in front of the green screen? Her name is Diana. And I was like. I was like, these photos might as well just be taken on a phone. <laughs> no, they do that right? now. They do it on. They just take it on the iPad now. Yeah, because because these pictures are just. I mean, this is. <laughs> I, I do not know this lady's normal work, but these pictures. Are, <laughs> she, she was a very lovely work. lady. A she was a very lovely lady. She kind of looks like Meryl Streep. But these pictures are like you as a as a as a rude girl. You you are terrified at the notion of one of these pictures popping up on the internet. Yeah, for sure, for sure. 
Um, Betty's looks great. The illusion of Betty's was so good. It was such a cool idea. Betty fucking nailed it. Yeah, Betty's is really, really cool. It, it really fucking great idea and just nailed it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Completely yeah. agree. Robbie Turner also, uh, this, is a, this is a great idea. This is something that no one else thought about and this is an iconic movie for Madonna. So this was great. Yeah, she's doing Leave with Her Own. And um, yeah, this is also a very great look. I agree. Uh, uh, Chichi Devane made this, made this look in the workroom she stoned a corset that they you know they have that 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 bag of that box of corsets Mm -hmm. she took a corset out took some uh cardboard wrapped some chains around it work also she ended up cutting herself because like she ended up with like uh cuts across her chest from doing this too yeah uh chi chi showed up without a madonna look and then ended up making one for herself there and then she made herself this head made herself this this um head with this like mask or thing and she did this whole thing there because i was like girl and i like i asked she goes she goes i just didn't have time i was she, she had two jobs come, headed to drag race damn she she better work and then we have me pop the drag queen who's doing madonna at the glad awards and i Yours really love this look Every, I, at the time it wasn't obscure like at the time it was it was like a hot topic like madonna had just done that glad award thing um Maybe now, you know, seven eight years later, seven years after Drag Race, and probably another three years after that. So now we're like ten years away from it, probably. I, I agree, it's a little bit obscure, but at the time, I think it was really relevant. Uh, I really was proud of the details I put on this, the, the my, my scout number. I also had yeah, it was the really um, smart. I handpicked out where it said Boy, Boy Scout. This is an actual Boy Scout shirt fr- that I got from Boy Scouts of America that used to be in the garment district. And I had to go in there and I picked it out. And then I dropped it off at an embroiderer's. And if you look close, it actually says RuPaul's Drag Race on the thing. Um, yeah, that's really smart. I, uh, I I handpicked all these badges, put the rainbows in there. Um, e- even the little thing around my neck on the back, it actually... Uh, has a drag race emblem. I really went in on this on this thing. I was very proud I, of it. I love all that stuff. I this fucking wig. I hate this hair so much. It gives me it gives me hives. Everyone hated this wig, and I just this don't wig, know why uh, they hated it so much. You you still don't know why they hated it so much? Yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> this would wig you wear this wig so... today? What? Yeah. If would I have you... if I have this wig, if I if, if I could find her, if I could find her, I would rustle her up, give her a little. Shimmy, shimmy, shake, <laughs> and then I would put on my head, and, and I would win, and I would win another challenge. Penny, this wig gives me highs. I feel seasick looking at it. I feel no. I hate this wig so much. This is also the look that that person tattooed of you, and it, and you know what? The fucking spirit of this for <laughs> that fucking wig. <laughs> so the reason why I wore this wig is because so this was a random wig I had. It was, it was a three tone wig. It was. <laughs> It was blonde. <laughs> it's so bad. It was blonde in the front. It was red in the middle, and it was brown on the bottom. Girl, <laughs> and I and I and I wanted to be blonde because Madonna's blonde, but I don't really wear blonde wigs, and I think this may have been the only blonde wig I had at the time. Like solamente, bitch. You should have just took the one from 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 uh, from uh, from Bitch Perfect and tease that up into oh. something because, girl. Anyway, I won this challenge, and I think I look nice. <laughs> so Bob was the winner of the challenge, which leaves um, Naomi Smalls and Acid Betty in the bottom. Um, how was the listening in real time? I'm trying to get ready, but like, I'm also trying to like... Um, I, 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 it was so long ago, but I, I feel like... Oh, real quick, about the... um, Before we... No, we're, we're skipping over some stuff. What? I want to say... um. The, the, this episode has the famous image of Kim Chi doing this in the background. Oh, yeah. While Naomi is just crushed. Naomi is like crushed and destroyed. And Kim's like. <laughs> um, and this episode also has um, uh, one of my favorite moments where Robbie Turner goes, Punk took my voice away. Oh, and my they're like, God. Robbie, they're, yes. they're like, Robbie, we didn't like your Snatch game. She goes, Yeah, well. But, because I lost my voice. They're like, no, bitch, we heard you. RuPaul yeah, was like, no, we heard everything you said. The moment. She was like, she's like, yeah, I got, it. I, I, I lost my voice. And they were, and it was really a gag because it's weird because like normally you, you lose your voice the next day, but it was punk 
and then snatch game and then the third day so it was the second day after and she was like i lost my voice on the second day i guess <laughs> and, and rupaul called rupaul did not let us sleep rupaul was like no 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 we heard you we just didn't like what we heard we just weren't living yeah but the, the gag was her turn for the affectation she was like yeah i lost my voice i lost my voice i'm like bitch what punk took my voice away um and also, I, I won seven thousand dollars in Lux Deville bags. I want y'all to know something right now. But I, I really like Lux Deville bags. I, I was in line with them. But Lux Deville bags aren't that expensive. So I didn't get like five like bags. Bitch, they dropped off. I mean, the kind of boxes you move with the big ones. Five of those to my home. <laughs> Five of them. <laughs> I had so many fucking Lux Deville bags. It was wild. I was giving away Lux Deville bags for a very long time. And this is one of my favorite moments. So when uh, this is so Bob actually won, and then um, Purse First came out, and then I at, at at the show Queen, I did um I did my Bob the Drag Queen mix, one of our things, and Bob was in town. I was like, oh, so um, and you were do, around doing something. You're like, oh, I was like, come to Queen afterwards, so you can pop out, you can pop out in my number and give out purses. And then for so when Bob pops out, I don't think they registered who it was. Like he was giving purses, so I have this video of Bob giving the purses and trying to oh, but no one was just... <laughs> no one no one wants a purse and the video you just see Bob going like and then no one takes it Bob just like and then, <laughs> I need to find this again for this episode I used to watch I was like, this here video. bitch here <laughs> <laughs> take the purse bitch <laughs> Uh, so this is your second win. How were you feeling after your second win? Were you like, oh, I'm good. I, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a front runner. I, I mean, if I'm being real, I always like a front runner. In fact, one of my uh, moments that I had with, um, with uh, the the late great um, Jacqueline, um, when we were sitting down, she would always ask me how I feel, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna win this. And she's like, Bob, you can't say that. You have to like. And she was like, I mean, you can say it if you really want, but I mean, it's. it's she was like. And she's like, at no point were you feeling anything else. I was like, I don't know. I, I think I'm doing really great. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna win this show. Lord. Oh, rest in peace, Jacqueline. I think about Jacqueline very often, to be honest. Me I too. Really love that lady. Me too. Um, and then um, that lip sync. I mean, Betty was trying to like pull off the birds and like trying to swing them around. And Naomi was oh, but also like, too. Be- Betty Betty says something else when she when Betty finds the bottom. She goes, "I agree. This game sucks, but." I agree my Snatch Game sucks, but I think Snatch Game sucks. And I was like, can you just take your L and, like, keep walking? <laughs> I think Snatch Game sucks. <laughs> like, can you just say I didn't do a good job and keep it and keep it pushing? Why I got to be like, well, it sucks because this whole institution is shit. I live. Because during the mirror moment, she came, she expressed that she doesn't fit in with anyone. Like, she doesn't fit in in the New York City Nightlife scene. Oh, yeah. She, was, she did. You know, and I also really love the, the point where Derry Berry just goes, Nancy, Grace is terrible. That's my, one of my favorite quotes in this episode. It's just Derry Berry going, Nancy, Grace is terrible. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, Betty was kind of like saying that she doesn't fit in anywhere and that she doesn't have like a lot of like, she doesn't get invited to a lot of stuff, but maybe it's, I don't know. <laughs> Damn, we, saw, we saw a softer side of Betty. Not trying to kick her when she's down, but I was like, well, maybe it's you. Damn. <laughs> I don't think we saw we saw a softer side of Betty. Oh, Naomi looks so hot when she's going for a club. Naomi has such a hot body. <sighs> very Sex great. on legs. Very, very, very great body. Yeah. Um, and I thought that the I th- I I really couldn't tell who won to be honest. I think that it could have probably gone either way. I do think that if if she, if, if Asta Bay was going to start giving birth, uh, something should have came out of the body. You know That's what I, mean? what I was thinking too. She was doing the whole thing. I think she should have pulled something out. She should have had a gag plan, knowing how bad she was. She should have put something in her and given birth to something. And you can see me crying very, very hard um, when Naomi comes back and when Nancy Betty leaves. This whole elimination just made me very emotional. I have never seen this side of you. Wow. Not Bob being emotional. I have never seen this. Anyway, Monet, as Betty goes home, Na- uh, um, Naomi Smalls is saved, and um, we have uh, 
a few more episodes left. I think we have five five more episodes left. No, n- four more episodes left. Yeah. Until the grand finale of RuPaul's Drag Race season eight. Are you team Robbie Turner? Are you team Chichi Devane? Are you team Thorgy Thor? Are you team Kim Chi? Are you team Bob the Drag Queen? Are you team... Derek Berry. Derek Berry. Wow. Not the Derek Berry erasure. Do you say Naomi Smalls? Are you team Naomi Smalls? Damn. So many, so many people love. But if it was if it was season 14, RuPaul would just say, fuck it, let's go to the finale with all 90 all motherfuckers. <laughs> um, all right, Monet, I love you very, very much. And, I love you um, too, Bob we'll the Drag all, Queen. We'll see you all, all next week. And um, thank you all for joining us on this journey. I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying... Uh, to quote some of you, forcing you all to watch season eight because Monet's on All Stars. Anyway, well, it's okay. Listen, we love you and we'll support you in this. We this no shade here, baby. We love you and we'll do this for you. Nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Goodbye. <laughs>